Lamentations 1 begins. How tragic. She sits alone, the city who was once a great noble of people. She has become like a widow who was once a great lady among the nations. Once a princess among the provinces, she has become a forced laborer. She weeps continually in the night and her tears are on her cheeks. For her, there is not a comforter from among all her lovers. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become enemies to her. The roads of Zion are mourning on account of no one coming to the appointed festivals. All her gates are desolate. Her priests are groaning. Her young maidens are grieving. And as for her, there is bitterness to her. And gone out from daughter Zion is all her majesty. Her princes have become like deer that have not found pasture, and they have gone without strength before her pursuer. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her affliction and her homelessness all her precious things that once were hers from the days of old. Then her people fell into the hand of the adversary and there was no helper for her. The adversary saw her, they laughed over her being no more. All her people are groaning while seeking bread. They've given their precious things for food so as to restore their life. And she cries out, Yahweh, see and look, for I am despised. The book of Lamentations is a book which mourns and laments the conditions of the siege and the capture and the destruction of Jerusalem and the subsequent deporting of the survivors into exile. And the historical context of the book of Lamentations has traditionally been that of 586 BC, in which the Babylonian army had come down and laid siege to the city of Jerusalem. And after about a year and a half long siege, they ended up breaching the city walls and capturing the city of Jerusalem. They then subsequently destroyed the city walls. They ended up burning down the city, the buildings, as well as burning the temple. And then subsequent to that, they took many of the survivors into exile. All of this recounted in passages like Jeremiah 52 and 2 Kings 24 and 25 and 2 Chronicles 36. But because of that context, we recognize that the Book of Lamentations is trauma literature. In other words, it is literature produced by the survivors of that catastrophic event for the purpose of giving expression to their traumatic suffering, so as to help them to move toward recovery from that trauma. And the trauma that is, is being talked about and recounted in the Book of Lamentations is a massive event, traumatic event, and that the trauma occurred not just on the individual level for individual persons, but it also involved the whole corporate community, the whole nation of Judah, and the whole city of Jerusalem as well. And so thinking of the trauma which they had experienced on an individual level, uh, during the year and a half siege, there was the personal emotional trauma of being isolated, confined to their city. Uh, they had a different type of stay in place, stay at home situation than we've had in the pan corona pandemic. But they too felt that sense of being isolated, not being able to leave their homes in their city. There was the bodily the physical effects of starvation and disease. And then during the siege and the capture of the city, there was the personal grief associated with the death of many of their family members and the death of many of their friends. 
they also experienced the loss of their material possessions, the loss of their homes, the loss of their businesses. And once they were in, taken off into exile after the capture of the city, those who survived became POWs, prisoners of wars. They became forced refugees. And then once in exile, in this new setting, they had to completely restructure their lives, the way in which they lived in a new environment, new location, living in the context of a new society, living in the context of a different cultural and religious situation. But there was not only the individual trauma, there was also the trauma that they had experienced at the corporate level. As a whole, as a community, there was the physical destruction of all of the city and all of the buildings. There was the devastation of the land as the Babylonian army had lived off of the land during the time of the siege. There was a complete decimation of the population because of the massive loss of the people in the conflict. On a corporate level, there was also the death of the political institutions. The Davidic king was removed from the throne and thus it meant the end of the kingship in Judah. There was the loss of their political identity and their political independence as Judah now became a vassal nation to Babylon. There was also the dissolving of society structures and practices. There was also the end of the religious rituals and observances with the destruction of the temple and the people being taken off into exile it meant that they could no longer perform the religious festivals and corporate worship or attend them because they were all built around the temple. There was the whole end of the sacrificial system, a key element of their worship time, because again, there no longer was a temple. But there's also the theological implications related to the promises of God, which seem to have been terminated. There was the promise of the land given to Abraham, but now they were exiled from the land. There was the promise to David of a king sitting on the throne forever, but now the only king was in exile and there was no kingship. There was promises related to God's presence in the temple and his presence over Jerusalem. And yet now the temple and Jerusalem were completely destroyed. There were the promises related to being the people, the covenant people of God. And yet now it seemed like the covenant had been completely severed or terminated. And so there's the theological questions of whether there was a future for God's people, or if there was a future, what would that future look like? What would the new normal look like after the destruction of Jerusalem and the survivors living in exile? So on both an individual and a corporate level, this was a huge traumatic event which the people of Judah and Jerusalem had to deal with. They had to cope with it, and they had to just figure out how they were going to survive. Trauma is part of our lives as human beings. We go through personal, individual times of trauma and pain and grief and agony. Uh, we, as communities, worldwide have, have gone through and are continuing to go through the COVID-19 pandemic and the trauma which that has caused because of the disruption to normal life, which, which has been a result of that. And we do go through individual traumas in our life at times. We go through corporate, society, communal traumas as well. 
And as we do so, there are kind of two questions that we focus on. One is, how can we cope with the traumatic event while we are in the midst of it? In other words, how do we deal with the trauma? How do we deal with the change in our lives while we are in the midst of these times of agony and grief and suffering? But the other question we ask is, when the traumatic experience is over, what can we do to recover from it? How do we move beyond the trauma? How do we recreate a new normal in our life once the trauma has passed? And that's what the Book of Lamentations is about for them. It is about processing trauma and grief. And we need to recognize that the Book of Lamentations is also part of the broader group of Old Testament literature, which was written and voiced and produced in the midst of grief and agony and trauma. So alongside of the Book of Lamentations, we have lament psalms, psalms which are crying out to God in the midst of the agony of some type of suffering or traumatic event. There's also the book of Job, which recounts Job's individual and personal trauma of the suffering which he experienced and trying to find out in the midst of it the reasons for why this was happening to him. So the book of Lamentations coupled with the Lament Psalms and the book of Job are part of this tra trauma literature of the Old Testament about processing trauma and grief. And the whole purpose that these, these are within our biblical canon, they're part of our scripture, is that they are there to show us how we can cope with our traumas. And not only cope with the trauma, but move toward recovery. And even though our traumatic experiences are really maybe at many times quite different from what the biblical writers went through, we don't experience, or many of us have not experienced something like the dis physical destruction of Jerusalem that the Book of Lamentations speaks of, that our traumas are, are quite different at times. But nevertheless, we also need instruction as to how we can cope with our traumas how we can move toward recovery. And as we focus on the Book of Lamentations, which helps us to do that, again, it helps us to be able to find a voice to our grief, our agony in the midst of our traumas. But it also helps and shows us how we can begin moving toward recovery. And so as we are going to be studying the Book of Lamentations and some of the Lament Psalms over the next few sessions, some questions to be thinking about. I've listed four of them here. But the first one, besides the coronavirus, think in terms of what corporate or group traumas has your church or your society experienced? Another question, what individual traumas have you individually experienced? Or maybe not you personally, but members of your family or personal friends have experienced. A third is, while in the midst of those traumas, where have you felt that God is? In other words, when you were going through the trauma, did you feel that God was close to you or distant from you or maybe even absent? And we're going to see that the Book of Lamentations and the Lament Psalms voice those kind of feelings about whether God is near or, or seems distant from them in the midst of the trauma. And then fourth, in reading the Book of Lamentations, what things can you empathize with? In other words, are there descriptions of the things that happen? Are there the expressions of the emotions and reactions to what happened? that are given in the Book of Lamentations that you can really emphasize with. In other words, what do you really, really relate to as you read through the Book of Lamentations? So again, in the next sessions, we're going to continue looking at the Book of Lamentations and Lament Psalms in dealing with this whole issue of processing our trauma 
and our grief.